Hello, my name is Dr. Bora Askar. I am an assistant professor of finance, as well as academic director of the online MBA and online BBA programs here at Temple University's Fox School of Business. I do research a, about digital disruption. I also teach courses about digital disruption. Uh, so today I would like to talk a little bit about digital disruption during this pandemic. This is a speaker series about how COVID-19 is affecting key aspects of business and globalization. With these short videos, we hope to provide you with valuable and relevant insights about industry and commerce that will help you to understand and better navigate the turbulent waters ahead. This series is sponsored by the Temple University Center for International Business Education and Research, hosted by the Fox School of Business here at Temple. COVID-19 has changed both the way businesses operate and the way people live. Uh, it is no secret that the majority of the economists are now expecting a recession followed by this lockdown. Um, there are, the markets have been turbulent. The stock market is up and down. There is a big um, impact going on in the oil market, which is going to, in return, impact the United States economy for sure. Um, we, we already see businesses are trying to ad adjust to this new norm and trying to cope themselves with, with this recession coming ahead. Uh, they're trying to reduce their cost, um, laid off people, and they're also trying to redesign and reinvent themselves to, to be prepared. Uh, so therefore, innovations are affecting firms from multiple industries. Um, so so with, with that impact, we see that the response to the pandemic um, is going to force companies to use more automation. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about artificial intelligence, fintech, and blockchain. So artificial intelligence is spreading beyond technology sector. So it is not just Silicon Valley. It may be the start from there, but artificial intelligence is going beyond um, computer sciences, beyond uh, just information services, it's going to affect multiple industries. Um, it's also not new that artificial intelligence is being used in healthcare. Uh, the companies uh, have been using artificial intelligence from research to diagnosis uh, to, to understand their or predict uh, the future patients and how to manage patients, so on and so forth. So the healthcare companies, pharmaceutical companies, and hospitals have been using artificial intelligence. Um, as countries and researchers focus on their efforts to diagnose and treat COVID-19, they are of course trying to use artificial intelligence and neural networks to scan X-rays and CT scans. Uh, but the issue here is there is not enough data in a lot of cases to help researchers to come up with solutions. Uh, sharing data globally will definitely help speed up this process. So if researchers can find a way to share their findings and their data with each other, artificial intelligence and machine learning can, can, uh, can incre increase this process uh, or to find the solution a lot rather a lot sooner. Uh, IBM uh, is trying to help this issue as well by offering a set of artificial intelligence tools designed to help researchers aggregate data, uh, study viral genomes, and explore, explore potential therapies. Uh, we expect more and more to, to, to happen in this field. Um, the, the robotics and autonomous vehicles also have been in the works for quite some time, and we expect this to become more mainstream in the next coming months. Uh, we have seen several news about robots being used in China, from treating patients to delivering food and drugs to homes. Uh, in the United States, we also have seen some similar examples. Uh, Mayo, Mayo Clinic in Florida is using driverless cars to transfer coronavirus test samples. Um, more companies, including Amazon, is expected to invest more in automation and robotics. 
Uh, for autonomous vehicles, we knew that we know that Uber has been working for some time. Uh, different companies, from Tesla to Ford, they're all testing uh, the waters for autonomous vehicles. Even though there was some um, uh, slowdown in the process, followed by an accident in an autonomous vehicle a couple of years ago, we see that um, more and more research is coming and companies are looking into utilize this service. And we expect to see more coming up in the near future. Um, this uh, artificial intelligence, one of the interesting industries that is impacting is professional sports. Uh, NFL is looking into this and we expect to see some, some, um, some usage even in NFL. A software startup firm is currently developing a program that uses machine learning to advance its metrics to evaluate football players. So during this pandemic with lockdown, uh, teams being limited to the tryouts, we are expecting to see some remote tryouts. Um, and, and then we know that there's a beta stages going on right now with using this technology, artificial intelligence, and we, we may see some more uh, professional teams using these means in the near future. So uh, according to one estimate, artificial intelligence startup raised, startups raised almost $7 billion in the first quarter of 2020 alone. Um, so this is, of course, the first quarter that does not really reflect the during this pandemic times as uh, since most of the lockdown and panic seem to start at end of february beginning of march so um so we we expect to see these numbers slow down a little bit um we also do not expect large investment trends um in, in the industry um in overall the economies during these uncertainties um companies as well as individuals hold on to their investment decisions. Uh, so we expect to see that as well, um, but um, the, the artificial intelligence may be an exception. I'll talk a little bit more about this shortly. Um, some, some, some other developments is the world's biggest smartphone software providers, Apple and Google, are joining forces to build a system that would alert people if they were in contact with someone infected with the coronavirus. Uh, they announced that the contact tracing tool will be built in, in, into smartphones using the existing Bluetooth technology. Uh, this technology would track whether phones have passed within a certain distance from one another. Uh, system then will retroactively identify users they came into contact uh, the past two weeks once someone is tested positive. We have seen uh, some examples of this in China and in South Korea, and, and this is this is important that we see these applications and more and more of usage in the United States. So, with uh, overall investment um, declining in the United States, including IT spending, um, we expect artificial intelligence expenditures to grow a little bit. Uh, some areas like customer service agents, chatbots, uh, digital assistants, and, and usage in pharmaceutical and medical research, artificial intelligence is expected to um, increase. The expenditures to AI is expected to increase. Um, IBM, again, is offering AI deep search tools to help researchers aggregate data. So, so we, with just this one example, we are expecting more and more investment in this field. And so the, the coronavirus disrupted supply chain. Uh, we have seen this. We have seen shortages of toilet papers or some other essential materials. This is simply because companies were not prepared um, in, in a disruption, business disruption like this. Not that they were not using artificial intelligence, but the, the algorithms behind those artificial intelligence, these supply chain firms or the large companies are using in their supply chain, are not, were not prepared to this kind of disruption. But we see that firms are adjusting to this new norm. Uh, software firms like Noodle AI, uh, they added new information to update their algorithms to predict 
food supply and demand. With that, distributors and companies are uh, rescheduling their uh, uh, fleet of trucks and trains they use, um, and, and we are expecting to see more um, more usage of AI in supply chain with this new adjusted data to help prepare. So we, we that is going to help prevent those, some of those shortages for sure. Um, and when it comes to finance, we are going to we are expecting to see more artificial intelligence, and we are already seeing some usages. So it is not you know of course again finance fintech industry is using artificial intelligence, uh, but they are adjusting to this new norm and started introducing some use cases during the during the pandemic. Um, and we know investors don't always necessarily make rational choices during panic times. Um, and some financial institutions are using AI tools to analyze their customer spending behavior and, and compare it to their financial means to help them make better financial decisions. Uh, now, fintech firms like Betterment is trying to avoid our wrong decision, investment decision, using AI tools. Um, and it's not, um, it's not unknown that during panic times, uh, people tend to uh, purchase uh, uh, the, the stocks, for example, at high prices. And with a panic, they sell it when it's lowest. Um, so this is not a rational choice. We want consumers to... Um, during during this economic uncertainty is hold on to their investment decisions. So Betterment is using a tool where it sends warnings to their customers who log into their account during a panic mode and sends them warning or some reminders uh, or some suggestions in what they should do. So this those reminders do not go out to all the customers, not to cause any panic or or the immediate reaction. So it's always sent out to the customers who tend to show these kind of behavior. So we are expecting definitely to see more and more uh, artificial intelligence during uh, the next coming months. Uh, so could COVID-19 be a catalyst for fintech? Um, there are a lot of signs that it can actually be. Uh, fintech, just like any other industry, is not immune to the challenges faced by COVID-19. Um, but just as the case with every change, with every disruption, uh, the pandemic might provide some industries with opportunities. We have seen this kind of opportunities created after the dot-com burst, after 2008 crisis, where it created some opportunities. Firms like um, the robot advisor firms like Betterment uh, actually came out right after the 2008 crisis. So with this, after this crisis is over, is over, we are expecting to see uh, more and more use cases and FinTech may be a catalyst. Um, the, the, the situation may be a catalyst for FinTech industry. Um, it is the financial institutions have always been the main drivers of digitalization. Um, the fintech companies are especially, but the financial institutions typically follow after, and financial institutions tend to adopt digitalization um, from the fintech companies, and we are expecting to see more and more. In Italy, for example, e-commerce transactions have risen 81% since the end of February, according to McKenzie. Uh, personal finance startup SoFi has agreed to buy Utah-based payment processor Galileo for $1.2 billion. They just announced it, but of course this deal has been going on for some time, but what it proved that is when things got challenging, they were able to continue uh, their, their talks. The SoFi CEO said that a shift to digital has been accelerated by the coronavirus shutdown as people lose access to physical bank branches. So we are expecting more and more uh, digital banking, digital financial services in the United States. And mobile payments, for example, in the U.S. is expected to exceed $130 billion this year. Um, uh, with, with it is proven, it is, it's shown that consumers will demand more digital banking. 
Um, digital banking demand will mostly force traditional banks to focus on innovation. Um, to, in order to respond to the challenges in the market, we expect financial, traditional financial institutions to go out and acquire more startups. So since we talked about investments or from venture capitals potentially declining, even in fintech industry, in those startups, we expect those incumbent tra traditional banks picking up the speed and uh, acquiring a lot of the startup firms to offer these digital products to their customers. Um, to give another example, um, Vanguard is announced partnership with N Financial in China. So this actual announcement is not new. This announcement came in back in, in December, but we expect some some significant um, so some significant updates based on this partnership. Uh, and Financial is a spin-off from Alibaba and it is valued at under fifty billion dollars. That's a large uh, two largest, one of the two largest financial firms partnership. Uh, their core product, Alipay, has over 1.2 billion distinct users. This represents almost 15% of world's population. So what it will do is this partnership is going to allow not only Vanguard to have access to all these 1.2 billion customers, mainly in China, but it also is going to allow the U.S. market to open up more individual investors. It would allow uh, traditionally the investors who have not access to the U.S. markets, they're going to be able to access to the U.S. markets, which I think is going to help uh, the, the U.S. stock market to recover faster. So we expect more automation and digitalization in fintech categories like peer-to-peer -peer payments, consumer and commercial lending, and issue tech. So how about blockchain in 2020? Um, so we, we've seen, we've been hearing about blockchain a lot since 2017 with the, with the hype around uh, cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin. Blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin, and companies have been investing and testing the waters in this technology since it offers a lot of um, advantages, a lot of developments has been happening in this area. In 2020, uh, we will probably more like to start uh, to see a new governance models that enable large and diverse group of uh, decision makers, even payments more efficiently. Uh, these models will help to standardize information from different sources and capture new and more robust data sets. The, the key to these developments in 2020 on blockchain is probably going to be the term interoperability. Interoperability is when when um, a, a software or a, a, a product can use different platforms. We have seen, for example, in peer-to-peer -peer payments, a huge jump in the United States in peer-to-peer -peer payments when uh, Venmo, for example, figured out interoperability. When Venmo started offering their product both in iOS and in Google, platform, Android platforms, they saw a huge jump in usage. So interoperability, interoperability will probably be the key factor to a wide range adoption of this technology. As we talked before, the pandemic uh, messed up the global supply chain. There are a lot of studies and use cases showing that blockchains can actually help. Supply chain is traditionally a, a paperwork heavy industry, uh, what blockchain is going, would help to do it is digitize and speed up this process. Uh, some adjacent technologies uh, can also help a wide range adoption of this technology. Uh, what we mean by adjacent technology is like IoT, Internet of Things, the connected machines, 5G, um, artificial intelligence, and edge computing when we combine these with blockchain, it, will, it, it is going to drive uh, the value, it's going to increase the value for all the participants in the network. For example, blockchain solutions that pair with 
Internet of Things and artificial intelligence compared to other emerging technologies are expected to be the top accelerators of blockchain enabled marketplace in the near future. There are a lot of cases, use cases happening more recently on blockchain as well during this, even a lot of announcement during this pandemic. Uh, HSBC recently announced that they put $10 billion uh, worth of paper-based private placement re uh, records on a blockchain platform offered by R3 Sporta. Uh, R3 is, is a consortium formed by a few years ago by large financial institutions. They now started to offer their platform outside of finance to other industries as well. So HSBC has been one of the earlier players in this consortium and they are planning to ramp up their project and invest more. Uh, more recently, we have been hearing more and more about blockchain in in um, in automotive automotive industry, the MW Group announced they are rolling out a blockchain supply chain solution to temp supply to temp suppliers this year. Uh, um, Tesla also announced some some work that they are working on blockchain technology in their supply chain. Uh, Toyota also has been working on this initiative for some time. Uh, they launched a cross-group virtual organization called Toyota Blockchain Lab back in April of 2019. They're planning to move forward with their initiatives they have been developing in this lab. So one of the biggest issues in, in entertainment may be this, this intellectual property and who owns the right, who, who owns the rights to the, to, the, to the product. So uh, the blockchain technology is actually offering a great solution to effectively track uh, who owns the content rights. So we are expecting to see more and more entertainment uh, firms or, or media firms like Netflix and, and Comcast to offer more blockchain solutions. Um, and finally, I would like to talk a little bit about digital currencies. Um, China is one of the big players in blockchain, and it's no secret that they have been working on a digital currency. Uh, China's central banks is expected to, to expand into wholesale and retail central bank digital currency. Uh, Ever since Global Times report citing some industry experts said the central bank appears to have completed the development of digital currency in phase and function. Uh, the central bank is now reportedly drafting a, a relevant laws to circulate the digital yuan. Uh, that would be some some big uh, that would be some big game changer uh, when it comes to international trade as well. Uh, the Riksbank, uh, Sweden's central bank, announced the launch of a year-long project of its proposed e-krona. Uh, the project uh, will use distributed ledger technology inspired by the blockchain that run cryptocurrencies. Uh, researchers at the Bank of International Settle Settlements, which is a central bank for central bank, uh, they say the coronavirus pandemic could inspire central banks to adopt digital payment systems. Finally, in the United States, we also started seeing some talks around this, and we may have just seen a glimpse of how a digital dollar actually may work, thanks to coronavirus. Uh, during this most recent stimulus package discussions in, in, in the House, uh, some Democrats appeared to back the creation of a brand new government-run payment platform that would use a digital version of a dollar. Uh, so that gave us an idea as to what it would be like to have a digital dollar where the stimulus package like um, money created by the government can be given straight to the consumers rather than that money channeling through the banks. Uh, so we are expecting to see some developments, even though even though this discussion has been backed up later, it was not included in the final package that passed, but we, we are expecting definitely to hear more about digital dollar, especially if China releases their digital currency. 
we definitely expect the um, United States government to respond to that accordingly. Uh, thank you for listening. Hope you are all safe. Um, and this is, uh, we, are, we are glad that um, you are part of this podcast, this, this series. This is a speaker series about how COVID-19 is affecting key aspects of business and globalization. With these short videos, we hope to provide you with valuable and relevant insights about industry and commerce that will help you to understand and better navigate the turbulent waters ahead. The series is sponsored by the Temple University Center for International Business Education and Research, hosted by the Fox School of Business here at Temple. Thank you.